I'm Tom Bacco. Uh, I work for the Commonwealth Foundation in Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm a writer and a development officer, uh, so I produce a lot of written materials uh, of good quality, and, and I, I help build relationships with our investors uh, in the Philadelphia area. My name is Abi Samuel, and I work for the Commonwealth Foundation. I've been working here for the last five years, and I really believe that it is uh, is my calling to be part of this organization and do what uh, they have tasked me to do, which is uh, to grow relationships with our supporters um, and find new supporters, inspire them in the fight for freedom here in Pennsylvania. My name is Priya Abraham, and I'm a senior policy analyst with the Commonwealth Foundation. I've been with, um, with them for three years. I focus on education and, and labor policy. And I am originally from Zambia in Central Africa. I'm an American by choice. I moved to this country uh, just over nine years ago. Uh, and I moved here for college, uh, but of course the story is uh, quite a bit more complicated than that, and it goes way back. I, I grew up in post-communist Romania. I was born just a couple of years before the Berlin Wall fell, the final years of the very brutal regime of uh, Nicolae Ceausescu, which is uh, one of the worst systems that humankind has experienced. I grew up in, in India, in the western part of India, and lived there up until I was 20 years of age. And uh, um, shortly after that, moved here to the United States. Uh, but the story really doesn't start there. The story really starts in 1992 when uh, sectarian riots broke out in our state and uh, uh, the Hindus and Muslims were kind of openly fighting. There was curfew uh, for people. We had to be in our houses by a certain time because uh, it wasn't safe to be outside. I'm originally from Zambia in Central Africa. That's where I was born and raised. And I came to the States to pursue opportunity. Um, in, in Zambia, the higher education system isn't very well developed. So most kids who come from middle class families will go abroad to study, usually in, in the United Kingdom or South Africa or the US. And since I wanted to study journalism, I, I chose the US because it had um, the best journalism programs uh, that, that I could see. Um, and so I have uh, been here for the last um, 16 years. I saw all these volunteers uh, who came over uh, to Romania for very little pay uh, to help rebuild these institutions. That uh, What struck me is that there were no other nationalities that I encountered. There were no Canadians that came over. There were no Western Europeans or Asians or, or, or Africans or you know anyone else but Americans who came and, and really cared enough about the principles on which their country was founded. Uh, that they came to my country uh, of birth and, and they built similar institutions. Um, so that, was, that made a huge impression on me. My mother's sister, uh, who lives in Pasadena, California, uh, is, uh, is uh, afraid for our lives and says, hey, you know, you, you, you should consider uh, coming here to America. Uh, and so my family did, and uh, she filed for immigration. Um, the, the incredible thing about this was uh, we kind of forgot about it, and 12 years later, the papers processed. And uh, uh, we finally moved here to the United States in uh, 2005, November of 2005. I think it was the 9th of November. When I think about the, the, the contrast and opportunity between Zambia and the U.S., I, I feel even more blessed to, to be here. In Zambia, um, if you are a rural subsistence farmer. Likely you're toiling 18 hours a day to just scrape a living from the land and likely your dad was uh, was a farmer before you and you'll pull your kids out of school to, to do the same work. Um, in America, if you come here not knowing English and having to work as a janitor, um, if after a few years of hard work you haven't moved up, your children almost definitely will. One of the biggest factors of culture shock for me uh, as I landed in the United States as a freshly minted uh, foreign student was I, I looked around and, and especially when I got on campus for the first time, I looked at these buildings uh, on campus. I realized I don't recognize any of the names after, which these, after whom these buildings were named. And that was strange to me because uh, I was used to you know, being in Europe uh, every street or, or square or, or building was usually named after a famous politician, a statesman, a general, an artist, uh, people whose names you tended to know if you knew your people's history. Uh, and 
I prided myself on knowing American history fairly well at that point, but none of these people uh, rang a bell to me. Then I realized that this was really a, such a great testament to the same spirit of philanthropy and kind-heartedness and generosity that I, that I encountered as a kid in those volunteers whom I saw. Uh, these were people who, were, uh, who got to live the American dream, who built fortunes for themselves. Uh, a lot of them were self-made and who then gave back to their communities, who established hospitals and colleges and universities and clinical research labs and, and all, these, all these institutions that really enable us, uh, along with the free for-profit uh, enterprise system, to really live the uh, incredibly blessed and privileged lives that we get to live here in America. I lived in Pasadena, California for a while. Uh, I worked at a gas station, and uh, that's where I was able to uh, gather some money together to go to to go to college. I went to college at Grove City College, uh, and uh, I was an economics uh, major there. Um, but I hadn't heard about free market economics until I m I went to Grove City College, uh, which is incredible because I studied studied economics at, in college in India. In India, however, I studied Keynesian economics. Keynesian economics says that you need government intervention to stimulate growth and to keep an economy vibrant. Uh, but free market economics, on the other hand, says that uh, if you leave the market unhampered and, uh, and, and don't have as much government intervention, uh, things will come together and that people will prosper, companies will, will prosper, opportunities will exist, and that's exactly what you saw in the United States. I have been so excited in the, in the three years I've been at Commonwealth Foundation to uh, be able to defend the American op opportunity that I was a beneficiary of. Um, one of the projects that I oversee is, is called um, Free to Teach, and it's our project basically to empower public school educators in Pennsylvania and let them know what their labor rights and union alternatives are. And, you know, I have been able to watch uh, how the teachers we have who are involved in the project have just blossomed, knowing that they have someone on their side with the Commonwealth Foundation helping them um, know what they're able to do um, and, and knowing that they, they may be in the minority, but that doesn't mean they have to be silent. So um, just being able to give them a voice has, has been phenomenal. I get to meet entrepreneurs. I get to meet uh, people that create opportunity. I get to meet individuals that uh, that have worked for a very long time and created uh, created wealth for themselves, uh, and, and going to talk to them about how did how they did that, where they can now be philanthropists. Now they can give to the community. I'm convinced that what the work that the Commonwealth Foundation is doing. Uh, with challenging some of the forces that would take these freedoms away, that would, that would really want to destroy uh, that system uh, that we enjoy, the system of free enterprise and free private uh, charity and philanthropy that we enjoy. Uh, and Commonwealth Foundation is challenging these forces at the root. Uh, for me, coming to America meant, you know, <laughs> coming to the final stop of the line. Uh, I recognize that America is the source and summit of, of a lot of these principles that, that we hold dear. And I know that if we lose this, and we can lose this, as Ronald Reagan said, freedom is never more than a generation away from extinction. I don't want my generation to lose that freedom, and I don't want my children, candidly, I have two small boys, and I want both of them to grow up in a country that's freer uh, and more prosperous and with more opportunities than, than I found.